let's discuss meeting with a director and game designer. So the first thing that you do when you meet a director or game designer and you've been approached or you're approaching them about this project is to ask questions. Find out as much as you can about their game. You want to come across as someone who is actually curious and that this would be a project that you're interested in. It's not just something you're doing for money. It's something that you're doing because you want to do it. Okay, so now when you are meeting with the director and the game designer, you're going to want to find out as much about their project as possible. You're going to go back and do some research. You're going to learn as much as you can about similar projects that have been done. And you're going to want to bring this to the table. If you know more about scoring than they do, you should be able to convey that. You should be able to show that these are other scores that have worked really well. And you should be able to reference them because that's probably what they're going to be doing. They're going to be referencing other films or video games and saying, this is what they've done. I'd like to do something like this and you should already know. So if there's a video game, you should already know what similar video games are out there. If there's a film out there, you should know what similar film scores are for that film or similar films out there. So your job is to build rapport and trust. You want to come across as someone who's likable, someone who they would like to work with because this is a team. It's a collaboration and it's a creative collaboration too. So the people that are the most creative are the people who are working in a team environment that everyone can get along well with. If you can't get along well with your team, it's hard to be creative with them. So you're going to want to come across as someone who is easy to work with. Now, when you're actually sitting down with the director and game designer, what you're going to do is actually walk through the entire film or at least a significant part of the video game. And you're going to go scene by scene, slowly and meticulously pointing, pausing and saying, okay, what do you want here? What do you want here? What does this look like? And hopefully if the director's done this before, he will have some idea already. But in my experience, they probably haven't thought this through very well. And you're going to want to be suggesting ideas as you go along because the director may or may not have done this before. So here are the things you're going to want to find out and you will, as you're walking through the film or video game, does the director have a musical background? That's going to make this a lot easier, a lot harder. And that's going to determine what kind of words and phrasing you use. You're going to ask for reference music. Does the game designer or director have something in mind already? What kind of songs or scores do they have in mind when they were directing the scene, when they were designing this idea? You're going to want to have these at hand that you can refer to. Whose point of view or perspective should the music be for? When you're watching a video, and there's a character on screen, the music is actually dictated by that character most of the time. If there's a protagonist, the music is probably going to be from their perspective. You're going to have happy music if there's a happy scene for a character. If it's a scary scene for a character, that music will be scary. On the other hand, if the villain is the one whose perspective you're making the music for, it might not be scary. So it's really determined by what perspective of the character on screen that you're making the score for. So that's one way to go scene by scene is identify, hey, this character is on the screen right now. Do you want the music to be from their perspective or from the audience's perspective or from the environment's perspective? What kind of perspective should the music be for? And of course, what emotional impact does the director want at its, each scene? Should it be intense? Should it be relaxed? Should it be what kind, what kind of uh, feel do you want for this as well? Because often you don't want to get too specific. You don't want to say, what instruments do you want? Because the director might say one thing and you'll go back and do it. And the director will say that wasn't very good at all. Whereas if the director says, I want this emotion, I want this intensity, you can come up with several different versions and you can throw that back at the director and he can say, okay, I kind of wanted this, but I like this one more or less and so on. But if you are limited by instruments, 
then you are in trouble. So try to focus more on emotions rather than on specifics, if possible. With video games, it's a little bit helpful to understand how the process works. For video games, it's more of a project. There's actually uh, parts that have to be done in stages. Whereas with a film, often you're given the film already made and you just have to score it. It's not often that the director will come to you and say, hey, I have a project, make the music, and then I'll make the video for it. Probably is not going to happen. Very rarely. Usually, it's the video is made and then they come across for the, the score afterwards. But for video games, there's actually set deadlines that are supposed to be done. So here's the timeline for it. You have the team formation where they decide which members are going to be involved. You have the concept pitch where proposals and pre presentations are made. The design document where they design every single thing that's going to happen throughout the entire video game. And then they have the walkthrough, which is the early prototype. This is sometimes where you're brought in, but sometimes you're brought in earlier. Sometimes you're brought in straight from the beginning, depending on what the game is. And they might want to have you through, involved throughout the whole way so that you can carefully craft your music as you're going along. And the stage can be a creative and evolving one. Um, then you have the beta release and you get feedback from others and they will completely tear everything apart. Everything that you've worked so hard to achieve will now be removed and you'll have to start from scratch often. Then they have the trailer, which is where you will compose the trailer for them, and the final release, of course, at the very end. So for video games, you're often involved a lot earlier in the process than in films, where you will be expected to work a lot more collaboratively with people who are not involved with the music, just because they will have a lot more ideas that you will be exposed to and you'll be bouncing ideas back and forth. And sometimes you'll have other tasks as well. Money, 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 money. How are you being paid? Is it hourly? Is it project-based? Depends on the project. Sometimes they will pay you differently. This is an area of difficulty for most people in creative, the <laughs> creative uh, consulting because money is different on every project. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. How are rewrites going to be budgeted? Is the director going to rescore everything later? And if they do, how are you going to be compensated? I once worked on a project where I didn't do this. And we went through the entire film and everything was scored. And then at the very end, he said, you know what? I didn't like this and this and this and this and this and this. I want you to redo the whole thing. And I hadn't budgeted that into the contract. I hadn't done that. So don't fall into this trap. Make sure you have set this up in the beginning. If the director or game designer wants to have rewrites later on, how is this going to be budgeted? Does the director want live music sessions? Uh, you need to budget accordingly, as he may expect you to coordinate all the spending for music, and he might not want to deal with it. So he might just give you a sum of money and say, okay, take care of the music, and you're going to need to budget this if you're going to hire violinists or something like that. And of course, what is the timeline for the project? How much leeway do you have if you need more time? Um, how do you do this? Uh, there's a software called Instagant, and I find this is quite useful for budgeting your time. You get the first three, well, at least currently, you get the first three Instagants free, and then after that, you have to start paying. But I find this is quite useful, and it's a way to budget your time, and you can show this to the director or game designer and say, you have given me this event, this scene for the film, for the video game, and here's how much time I need. If you want me to rewrite this, it's going to extend the amount of time I need by so much. So this is useful because you can actually point out to them and say, these are the tasks that I need to do. This is the timeline, how much time I need. If you need me to do something else, this is going to get pushed back. Everything else will take a little bit longer. So this is one way to show to your boss, hey, uh, you can ask for more tasks if you want, but it's going to take longer. It's going to need to be budgeted accordingly. So. Before you start, you're going to want to make sure you've summed up all of the expenses that you expect to have to pay, what kind of software, what kind of musicians, and then from there, you should be 
able to budget yourself.